What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with a new Warframe video coming at you with a video on how to buff single target weapons. Now this video isn't going to change anything, it's just a little passion project on the side, you know, because it doesn't matter what we say, it's all, all going to get donawalled by DE anyway. Now in a perfect world, we wouldn't be in this situation. We'll be enjoying the game as is, where we can use any type of weapons we want. But of course, there will be those missions where we have to optimize for a certain loadout. So what got us into this situation in the first place? Well, unfortunately, it's not really the weapon's fault, but more like the mission types. If it wasn't for the really bland mission types like exterminate, capture, rescue, right, we wouldn't be in this situation. The smartest thing to do would be reworking mission types, but that takes a lot of work. But what's a lot simpler is just changing how weapons work when you look at things in a bigger picture changing let's say 10 weapons is a lot simpler than changing an entire mission type you know adding some mechanics sequences that you have to go through that's that that seems a lot of hard work and i don't think they have the time for that with you know with all the development that they're trying to do in the in, you know in the shadows that we don't see now that reworking missions is out of the question, how would they rework weapons? Now, there are quite a few weapons, single target weapons, that is, that do a really good job at clearing hordes of enemies. But what makes them really good is that they are pseudo AOE weapons. You see what we're getting at here? For example, here we have one of the best bows in the game, but it's really overlooked because not many people want to invest in such a weapon. For one, it, it gives you a lot of visual clutter when you shoot an enemy it spawns these toxin clouds that deal damage to the enemy and that's a lot of damage i haven't even built up stacks yet and look, look how we're killing now if we pair this up with the vara i put these here beforehand go invisible we get our buffs and well let's not talk about my aiming here but yeah once you get those shots in you do a lot of damage and these toxin clouds will persist, dealing damage to anything that walks into them. Then we have other weapons as well that are pseudo AOE. For example, the Amprex. It's a beam weapon that chains to nearby enemies. It's really good at clearing hordes of enemies. Of course, when you build up your stacks, boom, things die. And it, and look at that, also crowd controls enemies with the electric procs. One of the old school weapons that completely destroys. And the Astia, right here. This explodes on impact. Granted, I haven't bought this right yet. Or I was using this with a nourish build, since it just has cold. It would combine into viral. But yeah. You shoot it, it has a small AOE explosion, it, it works. And of course, I'm pretty sure you know about the other ones, like the Phage, uh, Exceltra. Not really great for Steel Path, but really good for Star Chart. But we're talking about Steel Path here, mostly. The Ignis Wraith, this works pretty well. You have the, uh, what is this? The Verma Splicer, the Chromorex with its little explosions. These are all pseudo AOE weapons that work really, really well in Steel Path because they're single target, but they have some form of AOE that can help you clear enemies. Single target, but it has an AOE explosion. This is a very, very nice utility. Bring him in. It works really well. Yes. Now, giving weapons more quirky gimmicks like these will actually make single target weapons more usable and more uh, appealing to people. I have a list on the side here. You can see it. It has some quirky gimmicks that work really well with Warframe. And it may be similar to another game, <laughs> Destiny 2, right? But still, I mean, there are things that Destiny 2 has taken from Warframe and made it better, like the finisher system. But let's start off with some of the buffs that can help single target weapons. Uh, number one, 
is give us innate punch through. There are a few single target weapons that do have innate punch through, which makes them quite fun and usable. For example, you have the Phantasma, the Ignis Wraith, and of course, beam weapons that chain to enemies. That kind of simulates some punch through because it chains to nearby enemies. Giving pellet based weapons innate punch through will give it a significant bump in KPS because your bullets don't have to focus on that one target. If it hits that target, you still have have that one or two meters of punch through that will go and hit the enemy that's standing right behind it. So essentially what I'm saying is instead of blowing your entire load on that one target, uh, you can blow your load on even more enemies. Don't don't look at me like that. That's the most obvious thing. Give single target weapons in a punch through, which is a lot better than giving them a three times headshot multiplier. Yes, that's more damage, but it's more damage for one target. Will that increase your KPS in the grand scheme of things? No, because the weapon still has its own base damage. It has its own scaling. So some weapons may benefit a lot more from that buff than others. We want weapons to be at a certain level of balance where they can do the damage, but some do certain things better. For example, if I want some AO explosions, yes, I'll go with the Brahma or the Tsar. If I want some great single target damage that can also help me clear hordes of enemies, I would gravitate towards using something else. For example, one of the best single target weapons in the game that scales to crazy levels is the Convectrix. This thing is a beast. And for those who do level cap, meaning going against level 9,999, you know what I'm talking about. This has no stacks, by the way. That has no stacks. And of course, the more stacks we build up, it, it just, just destroys. Mind you, mind you. There are no merciless stacks or anything like that. And I'm still destroying them. This thing is a fucking beast. Pardon my lenguage. It has dexterity. And it, and you can see there's no elements on this build. Very powerful and efficient at killing enemies. So if you put something, let's say, like a Merciless, since bleeds are not really good at proccing Deadhead, we'll go with Merciless. And this damage is gonna scale relatively high. Especially if you combine it with, you know, let's not, okay, let's not use Avara's buffs, that's kind of cheating. All right. We just built up a stack. I'm just touching them, all right? <laughs> See, this thing is disgusting. But guess what? I would not use this in a normal mission. I would rather use an AOE weapon. Even though this thing is devastatingly powerful, I would only use this if I'm doing disruption. If I want to cheese disruption, I would just use this because you don't need any buffs. You don't need anything special. You just need to prime the enemy, swap to this weapon, and kill it. It destroys Demolists. Regardless, it's that powerful. However, if I'm doing other missions, like survival or whatnot, I won't use this weapon. I would rather use something like the Amprex, Mutilus Cernos, the Chromarex, uh, the Astia, the Ignis Wraith, the Verma Splicer over the Convectrix. You see what I'm getting at here? If this weapon had way better punch through, then yes, I would consider using it. But unfortunately, it is heavily focused in the bleed department and it requires you to ADS most of the time just to get the concentrated shots to do a lot of damage. Now let's go back to pellet based weaponry. Okay, here's another useful buff that can actually buff single target weapons. Yes, we have the punch through, but uh, what else would be really good at clearing these enemies with a weapon like the Exorcist? Giving it a ricochet, shooting a headshot, should have a chance, let's say 50% chance, to ricochet our pellets to nearby enemies. Right, dealing 50% of the damage. 
that will be quite a significant increase over giving us a three times headshot damage multiplier. Here's another unique weapon that has a very unique trait, and hopefully we can get some of this in, you know, other weapons. Here's the Zhug Prime. It has a very nice gimmick where its bullets detonate after a small delay. It has a small AOE explosion if enemies are, you know, clumped up. This is more... S As you can see, that was quite impressive. This is more similar to explosive payload, time payload, explosive head, like in Destiny. Shoot a bullet, there's a small delay before it detonates and deals some damage. Or you shoot an enemy on contact, it will explode. Basically increasing your DPS quite a lot. We have here another weapon called the Banacor. It's a very nice burst fire rifle. As you can see, it does quite a lot of damage. Of course, once you get a, a certain amount of kills, you can unload this big railgun beam weapon of destruction that has a small AOE. Which is very useful. As you can see, it cleared quite a, quite a few enemies right there. So if we implemented this a bit more on some other weapons, you know, corpus tech weapons, could be very useful. Or have it where once you shoot a few shots, release a homing missile that will deal some AOE explosion. Think of it like Pack Seeker, where you shoot an enemy, kill it with a headshot, and then you have these seeking projectiles. Something like that, but more on the lines, if you continuously get shots into the enemy, you have a chance of releasing a seeking homing projectile that will detonate. It's going to give you an increase in damage and, of course, will help you with some horde killing. I bet a lot of people forgot about the Batacore. Here is another one. When was the last time you guys ever thought, you know what, I'm gonna use the magnetic elemental damage type, you know, so I can proc it on enemies. Since it works really well against shields, I'm gonna use it a lot more. Whenever you thought that was a really good idea, unless you were running some meme setup for corpus level cap, which is that much of a niche. What if you change the magnetic status vector to actually, to actually live up to its name, magnetism? Okay, here's one. Proccing the magnetic status effect will create a small magnetic force energy pull thing, which will gather in enemies. Wouldn't that be interesting? So imagine if you had a magnetic nucor, body shot them, pull in enemies, swap to your main weapon, and then boom, that's another great CC tool to have. Or here's another one. You know how we get health orbs, energy orbs, and ammo? Well, how about if we kill an enemy, right? Their corpse turns into a trip mine, and enemies that walk over them or get close to them will detonate and deal some damage. I think that'll be quite unique on some weapons, especially infested weapons. The damage doesn't have to be something that great. It could just proc viral or proc toxin on the enemies which would be very nice against corpus enemy units everybody knows about sobek and its acid shells augment acid shells basically will take a portion of the damage dealt to a very hefty healthy target and spread that portion of damage to nearby enemies works really well if enemies have no armor here's another thing that's been plaguing guns as a whole and that is reload speed reload speed can actually kill your dps and kps and also can kill you because if you're spending time reloading you gotta take cover or something but the thing in warframe is that enemies just swarm you regardless there isn't a sense of taking cover the only thing close to taking cover in warframe is you crowd controlling enemies putting some sort of barricade or shield or bubble around you or finding a secret spot, proccing Vazrin on yourself just to give you time to reload. Just quite sucks. So they should actually give us perks. For example, in Destiny, we have something like rapid hit and get precision hits, reduce your reload speed. You have triple tap, has a chance to return bullets to your magazine, subsistence, which is another great perk as well. All of these things could definitely also help guns as a whole 
Yes, guns. Or here's here's another one. Getting a kill will basically reduce your reload speed. So if, if, you're, if your weapon has really, really crazy DPS where you can mow down enemies, you'll basically not have to reload. But of course, ammo will still be an issue. If you're just continuously shooting enemies, you will run out of ammo eventually. But that's also a bit overpowered when you think about it, especially if you have something like the Fenmore. Yes! The Fenmore and the Latum. Great examples. The Incarnate weapons. The only two good Incarnate forms. The Felarx is way better in its normal mode rather than Incarnate. But those weapons. You charge up a meter and you get a different firing mode <laughs> that isn't affected by reload speed. That's also another great buff. So these are the few things that can help buff single target weapons. But at the same time, if you didn't realize, I just showed you some very useful weapons that are single target, but do quite a lot of damage and can clear hordes of enemies. But are they good in quick fisher missions? No, absolutely not. But they're quite good in survival and even disruption. So this video is meant to, you know, do a what if scenario, you know, D actually did good buffs. And also, hey, check out these weapons that you probably don't even know about. Anyway, if you guys have any more interesting ideas on how to buff single target weapons, please leave it down in the comments. I would love to see and read up on your ideas. But then again, this is just a video that will be Donawald, but it's all good. But if you like these ideas, hey, DE, it's free money. Doesn't matter. For those who enjoyed this video, thanks for tuning in. If you learned something, please. Feel free to give a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, streams, and so much more. Do refer to the description. Seriously. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more. And as always, peace.